If you can't tell, this weld is not going well. One 10 second change can make it run like this. Hey, welcome to the shop. Today we're looking at TIG welding porosity and not the common cause of shielding gas. You know, if you're to Google weld porosity, you'll probably get a lot of results for shielding gas. This is caused by something totally different. And I'm gonna rewind back a few steps because I haven't showed you the whole story. So we're starting off with some cold rolled steel. It looks pretty clean, but I'm gonna wipe it down with acetone to make sure that it's really clean. And you can actually see the difference where there's some preservative oil left compared with where I wiped it. After I clean those coupons, I'll tack them up in a basic T-joint. You can see my tacks here on the end came out nice and bright, so I know I'm getting pretty good shielding. By the way, I'm running a number 12 cup here with about 20 cubic feet per hour. I like this setup because it gives a little bit more gas coverage as you uh, weld along, and it also lets me extend my tungsten electrode out a little bit more. Now I'll go ahead and run this weld, and you can see this is going a lot better. This is not that weld that we have problems with, but uh, it's coming before it. Afterwards, that doesn't look too bad for a weld on just low carbon steel here. The weld that we were looking at before is on the back side of this. So watch the back side as I weld along here. See how it's getting hot, it's turning orange, and then afterwards it's gray in that region. That's because the steel got hot enough to react with the oxygen in the air and form an oxide layer on the back. This happens with pretty much all materials. Titanium is really severe with it, and whenever you're welding titanium, you usually need to shield the back side of your weld with argon as well, and that's also the case pretty often with stainless steel. But with carbon steel like this, it's usually not necessary because a little bit of an oxide region isn't a problem unless you're gonna weld over it, that's when you run into the problems that we're having here. Now the solution to this is pretty obvious. Remove that oxide layer. You might be thinking, okay, let's just grab a wire brush. You can do it with a wire brush. Notice here I'm just going one direction um, because whatever you're scraping off, you have potential to jam down in that joint and that can give you problems too. So running one direction is nice. I'm usually not that patient and I'll just go for a grinder with a wire wheel. I'll just take a quick pass with that wire wheel on the grinder. Everything's cleaned off. Then I can take a rag with some acetone, wipe it all down and it's ready to go. I'll run a weld along here and this is running just as well as the brand new material. And if you take a look at this backside weld where it was cleaned off first, you can see it laid in really nicely. I didn't hang around long enough with my post flow. Uh, that's why it's a little dark there at the end, but uh, overall, definitely sound. I don't have all that porosity like I had, so I have a good weld on the front side and the back side and I'm good to go. So there's your tip. If you have to weld on both sides of some steel, it's a good idea not just to clean your material beforehand, but let it cool off a little bit in between your welds, brush that oxide layer off, wipe it down with acetone and you're ready to go. Now, if you are just learning to weld and you, you wanna learn TIG welding or any of the other common welding processes, I have a whole series of affordable online courses that I offer. You should check them out. I'll link them in the description below. So see if those might help you out, walking you through step-by-step -step small lessons to be able to improve and learn some welding technique and get on to building whatever you want to. Thanks so much for tuning in. Until next time, weld safe and we'll see you then.